Hi children, good morning. In lesson number one, once again we will revise children. So according to the lesson number one, you try to find out uh, this pulses like chana and uh, some millets you collect from your kitchen and cereals like rice. From where do we get all this? We get this all from growing crops right so who grows these crops farmer grow the crops so our today's topic is crop production crop production and management crop production and management to discuss about this before going to discuss we will see the meaning of a crop. What is the meaning of a crop? If it is a physical class, you would have answered by the time because we are revising this lesson. A crop means growing the same kind of plants in a large area. So same type of plants will grow in a large area. That is known as a crop. Then, Suppose when you are growing or when you are taking care of any plant in your flower pot, how will you take care of that? You will water to the plant regularly, you will make it the availability of sunlight and n, n number of activities are in different ways you will take care of your plant, right? Same way, the farmers need to do different activities before growing a crop. And tell me, do we get these pulses, the cereals and the millets? Do we get in the same season all these different varieties? We can't. It depends on the temperature. It depends on the availability of uh, uh, rain and the weather conditions. There are different seasons to grow them. So now we will see. What are the seasons suitable for growing different crops? Mainly in India, we will follow two types of seasons. Based on the two types, we are growing the crops. So based on the seasons, the crops are divided into two types. One is Kharif crops. The second one is Rabi crops. Karif crops and rabi crops are the two different varieties of crops grown in India based on the seasons. So karif crop means the crops which grow in rainy season. Rainy season that means the crops which need lot amount of water. They need more water for their growth. When the crop grows well, yielding will become more and the farmer get the profit. So we should see the crops which are suitable in the rainy season. The crops which need more amount of water for their growth. Right? So it can, they can also known as monsoon crops. Because we are growing in the month of monsoon. That means this curry crops sown in the month of June. And harvesting. Sowing is done in the month of June and harvesting can be done. We can harvest this crop in the month of October. So, sowing is in the month of June, harvesting in the month of October. We will give examples for millets like jowar and cereals like rice. Maize. These all crops we are growing in the month of June to October. We are getting this yield. Farmers can yield this crop in the month of October. So these are the months we get more rains. So the these crops need more amount of water. So the car, farmers grow these crops in Karif season. Now when we come to the rabi crops, 
they are also known as winter crops winter crops because these crops can grow in the month of winter season and they need less amount of water when comparative with the crops grown in the karif season so here sowing can be done in the month of november in the month of november sowing can be done and harvesting is done in the month of mid april mid april or june mid april or may in the month of may or the mid april they start harvesting the crops whatever they grow example like our wheat our peas and so these crops are also known as winter crops so what's the meaning of crop you understood how we can divide the crops based on the season which the farmers are growing and why the reason what for they selected this particular crops only in the rabi some particular crops only in the kharif means that depends on the atmosphere on the temperature and the humidity and depending on the rainfall these all in view of all this scientists will suggest them to choose the crop according to the season so whenever they follow this sequence they will get more profit yielding becomes increase now we will see now we are going to discuss about what are the activities farmers are going to do when they are growing any crop <coughs> now we will see the activities what activities farmers will do just now i said an example to you when you are taking a flower a plant in the flower pot you are doing so many activities in the same way when farmers are growing crops in an in a field they too will take a number of activities they too will do so those activities are known as agricultural practices those activities are known as agricultural practices so in this agricultural practices there are a number of steps which farmers are following their hard work is hidden to bring out a small rice into our plate so you should not waste the food while eating you should remember the farmers hard work so now we'll see the steps involved in agricultural practice among that there are a number of steps like preparation of soil and sowing the seeds and then manuring and then irrigation harvesting storing like this there are a number of steps now today we are going to learn about the preparation of soil the first step in agricultural practice is preparation of soil farmers will do will prepare the land before starting the cropping sowing the seeds they'll prepare the field so in preparing they'll follow some steps the first one is plowing first one is plowing and the second one is leveling leveling and the third one is manuring so to prepare the soil to make it ready for growing any crop farmers are following three steps mainly first one is plowing leveling and manuring now we will see the first step what's the meaning of plowing plowing is tilting the soil to make the upper layer of soil to go into the lower layers and to bring the lower layers of soil to the upper layer so that the upper humus humus is rich in uh, manure rich with the nutrients you know already so this mm, manure rich or nutrient rich soil goes down and it will be supplied to the growing crop so finally the plowing is mostly useful for fertile to make the land field fertile and also to aerate it 
What's the meaning of aerated? That means making the soil loose. Aerated means it makes the air to pass easily into the soil. So whenever the soil is becoming loose, air can pass so easily inside so that the plants can breathe easily. That purpose will do ploughing. Farmers are doing the ploughing. Then what implement we use for ploughing? For ploughing, the agricultural implement which we are using is plough. Now we will see the structure of plough, how it works out. Plough. Ploughing means making the soil loosen, unfertile, aerated. So for doing this, we are using a plough. Now we will see the structure of a plough, how it is useful. So a plough is having a long wooden beam which is known as plow shaft, plow shaft and it has a triangular wooden piece, triangular wooden piece it is attached to the plow shaft, it is known as plow share. So this plow share, this plow share is pulled, dragged by animals and this wooden beam is placed on the shoulders of animals. So when animals are moving forward, uh, this triangular piece make a hole, make a hole in the field and brings the upper uh, down layers of soil to the upper layers and make the upper layers to go down. That means it makes the soil loosen. So this is the uh, implement we are using to plow the field. Now we will see. What are the advantages of ploughing? We are, now we will see the advantages of ploughing. Before ploughing, the field should be watered. If it is water, then ploughing will be easy. So now what for the farmer should go for ploughing first? What are the advantages of ploughing? So when the farmers are ploughing the field, the field becomes, the soil becomes loosened and uh, the plant's roots will go deep into the soil so that they can breathe easily. So the first advantage is to make the soil loose and the second one is the plants can breathe e easily. Plants can breathe easily by ploughing and the third one Water holding capacity of the soil increases. When you pour water in any soil, you did an experiment in class 5. The water holding capacity you had seen, percolation rate you found out. When you pour the water, some soils will absorb the water. Some soils will, will not hold the water at all like sand. So by ploughing, the capacity will increase. Water holding capacity can increase. Water holding capacity increases. And then manure get mixed properly. Whatever the manure, what's the meaning of manure and types of manure we are going to discuss. So that manure, whatever the farmer is supplying, that can mix very well in the soil. Okay, and it also helps for the growth of microbes. It helps for the growth of microbes and earthworms. Earthworms are the farmer friends. You learned in lower classes that they make the soil fertile by taking, excreting the soil, by eating up the soil and they excrete the soil. Some nutrients get mixed up in the soil. And they are making the soil fertile, you learned. So some microbes, which are helpful microbes will be in the soil. Those get uh, uh, developed or improved. They come into the soil by becoming soil loosened. This can be added. These microbes and earthworms can be added. So this is all about plow. And we use another implement also farmers are using for plowing. That is... Hoe, 
especially this hoe can also be used for uh, removing the weeds what are weeds means the unwanted plants which are growing along with the crop plants they are not needed for us but even though they'll grow along with the crop plant and they'll go for a competition to the crop plant to absorb the nutrients to take the water whatever the farmers are supplying to that crop these weeds start taking all those nutrients so when the weeds are growing this main crop plants growth gets stopped so compulsory the weeds should remove so in removing the weeds mainly hoe is used and even to loosen the soil also we are using the hoe once if we see the structure of a hoe a wooden a wooden beam will be and from the beam a plank an iron plank is there this can be this is the structure of a hoe so it helps even to make the after plowing it if any uh, soil clumps are there big size of soil is known as big big size of clumps so to break this clumps so to break this clumps also we are using and this process is known as pulverization pulverization means making this making this clumps into fine soil is known as pulverization so in this process also hoe is used and then after making all this then we'll go for farmers will go for leveling the second step in preparation of soil is leveling these all there are different activities farmers are doing to grow their crops in that one is preparation of soil in preparation of soil ploughing leveling manuring these three steps are there we discussed before in that about plough and hoe both the agricultural implements you learned these are the traditional implements from long back our farmers are using and after making all this uh they did plowing before plowing they water their field after watering they'll go for the plowing and after plowing they are using different implements they are using and then they'll come for leveling uh, to make this leveling they'll use the leveler and another implement is known as leveler it will have a wooden or iron iron beam will be iron wooden or iron frame will be like this to this bamboo sticks are present here one thread will be by pulling this thread this makes the soil into even the clump clumps and all that uh, um, made into fine soil by pulverization after pulverization they use the leveler to make the whole field into an equal level when it becomes equal level then it will be easy while irrigation time once the farmer gives water it can automatically uh, move spreads to the whole field when it is leveled so for that purpose farmers are using leveler so in plowing how many implements we had seen just now one is plow once again we'll see the structure of a plow it has a wooden beam known as plow shaft and has a triangular plate known as plow share and it can be dragged by animals by keeping a beam on their shoulders when it drags friend and it makes a hole in the soil and plow the soil and then we are also using hoe for loosening the soil and if any clumps are there they should be changed into like fine soil by pulverization method after doing this uh, we'll go for leveling for leveling the field we are using a leveler leveler have a wooden or iron plank and then it has bamboo sticks like this and a rope when the farmer is pulling that rope uh, the field gets level when it is leveled 
irrigation time or watering will be very easy for the farmer. And we also seen the advantages of ploughing. It helps to loosen the soil. It helps the plants to breathe easily. It, it increases the water holding capacity. And it helps to mix the manure properly. And the next one, microbes and earthworms increases in the loosened soil. So these all are the different advantages of ploughing. Next we will see what is the next step. Even now and uh, modern implements are also coming up um, prepared by scientists. Agri scientists are preparing modern implements which makes the work easier to the farmer and less number of labor required. They can save the money. It is profitable to the farmers. That is cultivator. Cultivator. They are using cultivator. by uh, This cultivator can tie to the tractor. When one person is enough for plowing a land, one acre land can be uh, cultivated by using a cultivator. Very easily they can plow. When they are using the traditional tool like plow, it takes time and labor also required there. That can be reduced by using the cultivator. So these are the modern implements. In every step, modern implements are coming up nowadays. And by using this modern implements, farmers are getting benefited and they, they are increasing their yielding capacity and they are giving food to the country. So this is cultivator is one of the modern implement which can be used in ploughing the field. So now we'll move on to the after ploughing, after leveling and then leftover one is manure. When, what's the meaning of manure? Adding nutrients, adding nutrients to soil is called manure. Adding nutrients to the soil is known as manure. See, your mother will give you the milk only simple without adding any um, bone vita, hard legs or any other nutrient also. Only the milk also will give you the energy. And it's helpful for you supplying all the nutrients. But even though extra nutrients your mom wants to give you. That's why she'll add something in the milk, right? Same way, soil, by plugging only some uh, nutrients are uh, available to the plants. But even though farmers wants to give more amount of nutrients, that can be given in the form of manure. Adding up extra nutrients, adding nutrients, required nutrients. Suppose if a farmer is growing the same kind of crops years and years, many years together when he grows same type of crops, then the crops, that land, that uh, field may lose some nutrients. Because lack of nutrients, crops cannot grow healthily and it will not give proper yielding. So, to increase that, manure is compulsory to be added to the soil when they are growing the crops. Then, manure will be of two types. One is bio-manure. One is bio-manure. And the other one is fertilizers. In the form of fertilizers, we can give the manure. In the form of bio manure also we can supply manure to the crops. Adding more nutrients to the soil itself known as manure. So the difference between manure and fertilizers, how the manure is prepared we are going to discuss in coming class. And in today's class you learned about the crop meaning, the different types of crops. What's the meaning of curry crops and some examples when it when the curry crops grown and what's the meaning of rabi crops when rabi crops are grown and example for rabi crops you learned and you learned the 
agricultural practices steps you learned and in the first step preparation of soil you had seen in that three steps are there again one is plowing leveling and manuring in the two steps we are completed that is plowing and leveling we are completed and we had also seen the implements used traditional implements modern implements used in plowing and leveling we understood so your today's homework is draw the diagrams of draw the diagrams of traditional implements traditional agricultural implements used in plowing draw the diagram of traditional implements used in plowing and write the advantages of plowing and write the advantages of plowing you read your ncert textbook you will understand and you can also see the different diagrams plowing traditional tools modern tools diagrams are there i too will provide you the leveler and all in the video the diagrams i'll provide you once go through those all the implements and how the farmers are utilizing them you see how cultivator is better than the traditional implement you understand and uh, complete this homework children coming class we'll see what's the use of manure and the fertilizer which are better for use we'll understand thank you